Turn to the 14th chapter of the Gospel of John this morning. <clears throat> We're going to look at verses 1, 2, and 3 in particular. I know the fourth verse is there also. Hope by deliverance. John 14, 1, 2, and 3. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. I hope you have that passage of scripture marked in your Bible. I hope you remember it. It's a great passage of scripture for what we're dealing with in the world, in life today. One of the greatest passages in all of the Bible, quoted over and over by many people, known up there with the greatest known passages of the Bible, like Psalm 23, the Lord's Prayer, and others. It is that kind of a passage of Scripture. Let's look at it this morning as we think about hope by deliverance. Since Jesus was going away and he had told his disciples, verse 32, he didn't want them to be discouraged. He didn't want them to be lost, if you would, in the context of what he was talking about. And so he is setting here in chapter 14 the stage for the critical separation from his disciples. He said, I'm going away. He's been walking with them for three, three and a half years. And now he's going to leave them. Is he going to abandon them? No. But he is going to leave them physically. They don't understand that. They are troubled by it. And so Jesus begins this passage of scripture in John 14 saying, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Why were they troubled? Because he wasn't going to be there to talk to. Because he wasn't going to be there to have answers for them in their questions. Because he wasn't going to be there to reassure them in their experiences, in their meetings with others, in their situations with others. He wasn't going to be physically there, and so they needed that reassurance. Their hearts were troubled. They had a sense of anxiety, despair, grief, heartache. They were filled with questions. Jesus understood that. He knew that. And that's why he said, let not your heart be troubled. He's talking straight out directly to these men who have been followers of him. Thus the word of God begins with those words. And it continues to bring forth a truth, many truths. You know, we don't like to be thinking about death. Jesus has been telling about his death, hasn't he? He's told them for three, three and a half years that he's going to die. He's, going to, he's told them how he's going to die in a great, great sense of essence. He's going to die. He's told them that over and over and over again, even as he's told others who have come to listen to him and hear him. We don't like to think about death, do we? Oh. It's a dark subject. 
I'm not comfortable talking about that. I don't like to even think about that. But if every one of us in this building this morning lives for within the next hundred years, every one of us is going to be gone, folks. We're going to be gone. <laughs> Add a hundred years to your present life, and how do you think you're going to get around, get up and down, and, and go about living, huh? Man, we're going to be gone. Within the next hundred years, either one of two things is going to happen. Either the trumpet will sound and the rapture will occur and Jesus will take all of the Christians, all of the believers, all of the true followers up to heaven with him at the rapture. The church will be lifted up to heaven. The other alternative is we will come to that appointed time in life on God's calendar and we will close our eyes and draw our last breath and pass on from this world to the next in death. Those two things, one or the other of them, will occur in our lifetime. So how can we think about it? How can we face it? How can we find hope in the face of such a situation? Comfort, peace. I want to share with you five answers. Hope by deliverance from this three passage, three verse passage of scripture this morning. First of all, as you look at your outline, if you want to follow that, hope comes by deliverance through faith, through trust. Jesus said, I let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Hmm? Hope comes by deliverance through faith, through trust, as we look at this passage of Scripture. Jesus understood that we were going to have troubles. He understood that there would be times when our hearts would be troubled, our minds would be, you've never experienced that, have you? No, <laughs> yes you have. Every one of us has. And if we live very much longer, doesn't take much longer. We'll experience them again. There are financial crises. There are marriage crises. There are family crises. There are far and accident crises. There is sickness crisis. There's all kinds of crises in the world in which we dwell. Let not your heart be troubled. Jesus didn't say I'm going to take all the troubles of this world. We live in a what? We live in a cursed world, don't we? And we're going to continue to live, and so will mankind live in a cursed world until Jesus comes. The battle of Armageddon is over. And what few righteous that are saved during that tribulation period, they've already been lifted up by their soul, but they're going to be raised out of their graves and go off to be with God. And the rest are going to be judged and sent into that second death, into the lake of fire and brimstone. A new heaven and a new earth. And those who are believers in Jesus Christ and followers of Jesus Christ as the Lord of their life are forever going to be able to dwell with them. Jesus didn't say, I'm going to take away all your troubles. He said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. What he's trying to say to them, you live in a troubled world. I want to show you how you can have an untroubled heart in a troubled world. That's what he's talking about. And whether it's the subject of death or some other subject, we need to be thinking about that whenever 
our minds are boggled and our hearts are heavy. We need to be thinking about that. Because what Jesus says here is applied to that as well. Not be troubled. Not be overcome with anxiety. Not intimidated by separation of death from our loved ones, whatever. All kinds of things are going to happen, aren't they? Jesus said, you believe in God, believe also in me. Now, folks, that applies to while we're living our lives, even as it applies to death. You believe in God. Believe also in me. He's given his word over and over and over again. Jesus is telling them to stop being troubled by his words. Don't let my words bother you. That's what he's saying to them. You believe in God, believe also in me. To believe is to trust, isn't it? How many of you believe you're going to go home in a few minutes? Well, it might be longer in a few minutes. <laughs> You believe you're going to go out and get in your car and go home. That's good, isn't it? That's good. Okay. That's not good enough. That's not good enough. You're not going to get home by believing. If you really want to get home, you believe that your car, if you're going to get home, you're going to go out there and start your car, put on your seatbelt, Put it in gear and drive home. Sitting here, standing here, believing that my car will take me home will never get me there. It's when I put that belief into faith and into action. It's when I apply it. That's what Jesus is saying. You believe in God, believe also in me. We have to apply faith, folks. We have to trust in Jesus Christ. It's a clear-cut pronouncement that Jesus is God. He said, I and the Father are one. He said, I do the will of my Father which has sent me. On a number of occasions, Jesus said, I and the Father are one and the same. These men believed in God before Jesus called them. They seen the miracles of Jesus. They walked with Him. They heard Him. They experienced the life that He lived. But now He's going to go. He's going to be gone. And He's saying to them, just as you believed in God from the Old Testament, believe in Me. Because I and the Father are one. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. Why? Because he's one with the Father. It is God the Father who gives that everlasting life. Believe to trust. Hope comes by deliverance through faith, through trusting. It has to be more than a head knowledge. It has to be a heart knowledge. I can depend upon God. I can depend upon God's word. I can believe. I can have faith. I can trust. And it's more than just a head knowledge. It's a knowledge that I can take and go out there and get in my car by applying and go home. And that's the way it is with faith and trust in Jesus Christ. You believe in God, believe also in me. It's by applying what we know, what we understand. Hope comes by deliverance through faith and trust. Secondly, this morning, hope comes by deliverance through the promise of a future home. Look at verse 2. In my Father's house are many mansions. Hmm. 
<laughs> in my father's house. And many, Jesus knew all about that because where did he come from? He came from heaven, didn't he? He came from the father's house. And don't get the idea, the concept in your head that the father lives in a house in a, such a thing. He inhabits the whole universe. He's everywhere. Yes, he's on his throne in heaven. But don't put him in a 900 or a 3,000 or a 6,000 square foot house like you and I might live in because God doesn't dwell in such a, such a building. In my Father's house are many mansions. Jesus knew all about it because he had come from up there. He understood all that there was to know about it. There are many mansions. There is enough for everyone. You might think, well, it's going to be awfully crowded with all them people out of the Old Testament, all the people that's, that's lived in the last two thousand. You might think, man, I don't know if there'll be a place for me or not. I might have to put an ad in God's newspaper. House for rent. No. Looking for a house to rent. <laughs> yeah. No, you won't have to do that. Jesus said, in my Father's house there are many, many... You don't have to worry whether or not there will be a place for you or not. You don't have to be concerned about that at all. There's room enough for everyone. There are many mansions. Now what that really means is there are many dwelling places. There are many rooms. <laughs> I've got a mansion. Yeah. <laughs> you remember that old song? Yeah. Just over the hilltop. Well, I don't know if we're going to get a mansion or not, folks, and I'm not concerned about it. And you ought not to be either. You're going to have a wonderful place to live, and what's going to make it so wonderful is you're going to be there with Jesus, your Savior, your Lord. You're going to be there in the very presence of God. I don't know what kind of a place we'll have up there. I just know there'll be a place for us. And when we get there, it'll be ready. We don't need to be concerned about that. It'll be ready. Do you have faith in God? Do you have faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? You believe in God, believe also in me. Your faith has got to be more than head knowledge. It's got to be heart knowledge. That means experience knowledge. That means I believe it down here. I believe it to the point where I accept it and I want to live by it. That's what it means. And when it means that, I can depend upon it. That's what Jesus wants us to understand. I can depend. I don't need to be concerned about it. I don't need to be troubled about it. I don't need to get anxious about it. Uh-huh. And he's got a place for us. Thirdly this morning, hope comes by deliverance through Jesus' work. Verse 2. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. I go to prepare a place for you. Jesus is sometimes referred to as the carpenter. But don't you dare think that Jesus is up there with a hammer and a tool, tool bag and a saw preparing a place for you. Don't picture that in your mind. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. 
I must work the work that the Father has sent me to do. That's what Jesus said. I go. Where is he going? I go to prepare a place for him. Where is he going? Heaven. No, he's not going to heaven right now. He's going to the cross. To prepare a place for you, it meant that he must become the Lamb of God, the sacrificial Lamb of God, because until he becomes the sacrificial Lamb of God and you and I put our faith and our trust in him, there is no place in heaven for us. That must be first. That's an absolute essential. I go to prepare. Where is he going? He's going to the cross. And there he's going to become the sacrificial lamb of God. Just like those lambs were sacrificed in the Old Testament on the altar. At the tabernacle at the temple. That's what he's going to become. That's what he's going to do. That's how he's going to prepare a place. For you. For me. For all the others who would come to faith. By giving his life, by shedding his blood. He's making it possible for us to come to enter into the very presence of the Father. I'm going to prepare a place for you. I go. I go. And Jesus went to the cross, didn't he? But in that going, he did more than go to the cross. He went to the grave where he was sealed up. <laughs> so, so, so think, people. You can't seal up the Son of God in a, in a cave and rock. You can't roll a stone over it and seal the stone to the entrance of the grave and say, I've got the Son of God sealed up. <laughs> Jesus went down and took away from Satan the keys to the took the keys of hell and of death that's what he did during that period of time he took all of the power away from Satan that's why Paul could write later on and say oh death where is thy sting oh grave where is thy victory uh, Christ Christ that's where that's where there is no sting of death in Christ Grave has no victory in Christ because the resurrection follows. I go, Jesus said. I go. And so he went into hell and took away the keys of hell and death. I go, he said. I go. He went to sprinkle his blood before the Father. Why is that so important? Because as they sprinkled that blood upon the four corners of the altar in the Old Testament. So Jesus took his very own blood and sprinkled it before the Father. His blood became the one, the only thing that makes it possible for you to enter into a relationship with the Father. I go to prepare a place for you. That's what he's done. In Matthew chapter 20, verse 28, even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. In 1 Peter 1, 18 and 19, for as much as you know you were not redeemed with corruptible things, but with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish, and without spot. And Christ was perfect in his life. In every way. And so he was fit to be. The sacrificial lamb of God. Mark 15.38 says the veil of the temple was rent. Yes that too I go. And from top to bottom. You and I would walk up to it and we'd look at it and, well, we'd start at the bottom because we can't reach the top. 
and we tear it up. But this was rent from the top to the bottom. God opened up access to himself. Even greater, even more full than it had ever been. When Jesus said, I go, he's not talking about going off to heaven and building something. He's going to the cross. Hope comes by deliverance through Jesus' work. That work is what he did on the cross. I go to prepare a place for you? Yes, he did. But it's not up there with a hammer and a saw. It's on the cross. And through his death on the cross, the shedding of his blood on the cross, he has prepared with the Father, if we put our faith in him, a place for us. Fourthly, this morning, hope comes by deliverance through Jesus' return. Jesus said, I go and prepare a place for you, and if I go, I will come again. I'll come again. Jesus said, I will return long before Douglas MacArthur ever said that to the Philippines. Maybe General MacArthur got that from the words of Jesus. I don't know. I will return. That's what Jesus is saying. I'm going to come back. I will. It's a promise. Now let me ask you this morning. Do you believe Jesus can break his promise? Do you believe Jesus will break his promise? Do you believe Jesus has ever broken his promise with you? No, he hasn't. If you do, then you, be, you need to... You need to look into what you call your faith and your trust again. You need to look deep into your heart and see whether or not you really believe, whether you really trust, whether you really can take the words of Jesus without fail. The Bible says God cannot, will not lie. And Jesus is God. So he says, I will come again. It is a promise. It is the statement of truth that he is making to all mankind. He said, I go, but I'm coming back. I will come again. I go, but I'm coming back. He's not going to go off and forget us. He's not going to go off and Engage in something else and say, well, I'll send some money home. <laughs> no. He's not going to call once in a while. He said, I'm coming back. Oh, how many little boys and girls have looked for a daddy that would come back. How sad. I will come again. And Jesus meant every word it's a promise a promise that god cannot break we preacher have been here 2000 years since that promise it hasn't happened two th you know how long 2000 years is no i don't <laughs> i've had a hard time just uh, remembering how long 78 years is 2000 years wow a lot i don't know about back there but he made that promise, and he's never come yet. Why do you want to tell me I can believe that he's going to come? He hasn't come yet in 2000. Why do you want to tell me that I can believe that? That's an old fable. I run into people, preacher, every day, every once in a while, who tells me that you can't believe that stuff. Well, if you don't think you can believe it, then you're either a baby in Christ with a very insufficient faith or you have no faith at all. Because God does not lie. And Jesus is God. I and the Father are one. He didn't tell us exactly when. He didn't tell us that the angels will tell us because they don't know. 
He didn't tell us that the people who have already been redeemed and lifted up to heaven are going to tell. They don't know. Jesus said, I don't know either, but the Father knoweth. Three times in the final words of the Bible, what did Jesus say in the last chapter, in the last few verses of Revelation 22? He said what? I come. I come. I come, I come quickly. Yes. Hope comes by deliverance through Jesus' return. And it's going to happen one of these days. We need to be ready. Last of all, this morning, hope comes through deliverance into his eternal habitation. What good is it to have a place, many mansions, what, what good is it to have a, a dwelling place in heaven if you can't get there? Hmm. Not much good at all, is it? But what did Jesus say in verse 3? That where I am, what? There ye may be also. Did you get those last few words? Did you really, did you really grasp upon them? Did you take them to heart? There are you, where I am. Where is Jesus? He's at the right hand of the Father. That's where he's at. And he said, where I am, there you can be also. There's a place for you right up there with the Father, with me. What do you expect when you go to heaven? Some kind of fabulous mansion that sits way off over here and once in a while you'll see God. You don't understand what heaven's going to be like then, do you? Because the presence of God's going to be everywhere. You're going to see the Lord Jesus Christ face to face. You're going to dwell in his presence. Where I am there you may be also. With him. With him who loves us. With him who has redeemed us with him who has forgiven us and saved us, with him who has delivered us, with him who has cared for us and provided for us and blessed us all the way along, with him who has made a relationship possible with the Father. Where I am, there you may be also. Hope comes by deliverance. What kind of hope do you have this morning? Is it sufficient? Is it sufficient for what you encounter day by day? The awful experiences, the tragedies, the difficulties that seem insurmountable. Is it sufficient when you think about the end? We're going to sing our hymn of invitation this morning. And as we do... Maybe there's a decision that the Lord's been talking to you about. We're going to sing number 500, Trust and Obey. Have you, have you trusted and obey? Hope comes by deliverance through faith, through trust. Do you have that heart settled this morning? Maybe you want to move your membership. You can come in a number of different ways. Won't you come this morning? You come here, this is your church home. Why, why not be a part of this church family and membership? Why not saying, church, you can count on me to help, to be involved. Maybe you need to recommit your life. Hmm? Maybe you just want to come and pray.